Good morning. Today is Tuesday, September 10th. I'm Corva Coleman from NPR News, and here are today's top stories. Gaza's health ministry says it has confirmed Israeli military strikes on an Israeli-designated humanitarian zone in the southern part of the enclave have killed at least 19 Palestinians. First responders had initially said 40 people were killed. NPR's Hadil al-Shalchi reports the Israeli military said it was targeting Hamas command and control center. 52-year-old Mahashar said she was startled awake by big booms overnight. She ran out of her tent in the al Muasi neighborhood of Khan Yunis and became disoriented with the dust from the explosion. Mahashar said she had to dig out her husband from underneath the rubble with her bare hands. She's one of tens of thousands of Palestinians crammed into al Muasi, where the Israeli military said they'd find some relative shelter and resources. But now, there's no place at all that's safe in Gaza, she told NPR's Gaza producer Anas Baba. The Israeli military struck al Muasi before in July, killing 90 Palestinians, according to health officials. Hadil al-Shalchi, NPR News, Tel Aviv. Tonight is the first and possibly only debate between former President Donald Trump and Vice President Kamala Harris. They'll meet this evening in Philadelphia. California's Democratic governor is among those who will be watching the debate closely. From member station KQED in San Francisco, Marissa Lagos has more. California and its progressive policies have long been a target of former President Donald Trump and his allies. And while Vice President Harris hasn't been talking a lot about her home state on the campaign trail as she works to win over swing state voters, San Francisco-based politicians like Representative Nancy Pelosi and Governor Gavin Newsom are on the offense. At last month's Democratic National Convention in Chicago, Newsom was relishing his role as a Golden State spokesman on right-wing media like Newsmax. Newsom says he's proud of California's liberal record and will continue defending it. For NPR News, I'm Marisa Lagos in San Francisco. The National Hurricane Center says Tropical Storm Francine is churning in the Gulf of Mexico. It could strengthen into a hurricane later today. Hurricane Center Director Michael Brennan says a hurricane warning is now up for most of the coast of Louisiana. Most concerned about the wind threat here in this hurricane warning area from Sabine Pass to Morgan City. And we are expecting Francine to strengthen and be a Category 2 hurricane at landfall. We can see significant impacts in this region, power outages, structural damage as well. In terms of the arrival time of those tropical storm force winds within that hurricane warning area, those tropical storm conditions are likely to begin early Wednesday morning. Forecasters say up to a foot of rain could fall on Louisiana's coast. The Kentucky State Police are still searching for the suspect wanted in a weekend shooting. Authorities allege Joseph Couch opened fire with an assault-style weapon on motorists on Interstate 75 on Saturday. A dozen cars were hit and five people wounded. Police say another three people were hurt in car crashes because of the shooting. The Miami Dolphins have issued a statement after last Sunday's traffic stop of their star wide receiver Tyreek Hill. Police have released body cam footage of the stop, and NPR's Becky Sullivan reports the Miami Dolphins are calling for swift and strong action against the officers involved. Miami-Dade police officials released nearly two hours of body cam videos showing the incident, which began when two officers pulled Hill over for speeding. The videos show an officer forcibly pull Hill out of his car, pin him on the ground, and cuff him. The Dolphins commended the department for releasing the footage, but the team said officers' conduct was, quote, overly aggressive and violent. Two other Dolphins players appear in the videos attempting to de-escalate the situation. Tight end Johnny Smith and defensive lineman Calais Campbell, who won the NFL's Walter Payton Man of the Year Award in 2019 for his charitable work. Officers shout at them, too. Campbell was also placed in handcuffs. Becky Sullivan, NPR News. The police union for South Florida has released a statement. The union says that Hill initiated the incident, was uncooperative with police, and that they are waiting for Hill to explain his actions. You're listening to NPR News from Washington.